Every sewist dreams of having that ideal sewing space where everything is tidy, organized, decorated and stored where you can find it all. And that's exactly what we're talking about in this video is how to best store and decorate your sewing space to create your dream sewing space. Welcome back my sewing friends. I love seeing you here again. Thanks for watching. We are actually in part of a three part series series. For those that don't know, well, first here, welcome. My name's Evelyn Wood and I'm the creator of VintageSewingSchool.com. Those of you following along diligently every week, thank you. We are part of the three-part series and this is video number three, the last phase in this whole hashtag so organized series. So the first phase, well, this is brought about because I am actually revamping and redoing my entire sewing space here as well and I wanted to take you along in the process and break it down so you can follow the same process as me to create your dream sewing space because I know you'll be so much more motivated and enthusiastic to sew when you create, like when you build your safe space, your beautiful space around you for it. So the first phase is to design and plan. And that's where we basically take stock of what your space is and design different storage ideas, use your floor plan and make a, a plan of attack. And then the second phase, which we, all these videos link down below, by the way, the second phase is where we organize and sort. So we need to sort everything out before we can put it away anywhere. It comes all out, it's all sorted and then organized in a way that you can find it easily. And so this is the stage that we're at now. This is the place. Everything is organized. You've got it all in your little spots and now we need to just store and decorate the really fun parts because it's almost the end now. So let's break this down into storing and into decorating and storage. We have our three main storage items that we uh, store and that is fabric, haberdashery and notions and patterns. And let's start with fabric because we all have so much fabric and where how best to store it. Let's start with talking about how best to store our fabric. You want to keep it uh, dust free for sure. So clean and dust free. And if you are particularly prone to getting mold or anything like that in your household, obviously you want to keep it free of that. Uh, and also there's the debate of uh, folding it versus putting it on a roll, you know, on the bolts of fabric and rolling it up. So yes, you can over time, um, also, I should add, you absolutely want to keep it out of direct sunlight. That will be the, the thing that uh, perishes your fabric the most is sunlight. It will not only fade it, but actually damage the structure of the fabric. And that's where you get holes and tears. So keep it out of light. So storing it though in uh, folds like this, you can risk having permanent creases in different fabrics. Uh, it just, it can happen. And that's why storing things on rolls because there's no creases. Usually it's not a huge problem that we just, uh, you know, it's something that you just maybe come across a couple of times and you just have to deal with it because how else do we store cut lengths like this? We can't have rolls and rolls and rolls. So that's a choice for you. But cut lengths, what do we do with them? Well, you would have already in phase one worked out what space you have and what will work in there. So something like the plastic tubs is a really easy, accessible uh, way that I know a lot of us use because let's face it, they are very practical, although not that pretty to look at, but they do the job. So you'll store everything, like all your fabric in how you've organized it. So if you've organized via weight, you'll have a heavy weight or and a lightweight fabric or different colors. Maybe they're all like color coded within the tubs or maybe there's just one tub and you section it off into different areas. So you store it in the same way that it's been organized. Or you might just have uh, rows and rows of shelves um, that are out of direct sunlight that you just can stack all of your um, cut lengths of fabric on. That's quite common. Or the little cubes. Uh, I'm upgrading from these to lovely little uh, bamboo cupboards. So I'm keeping them dust free and out of light and they'll just be all um, stored. I like to just layer them all up in here. So you'll probably have something like that and that will be excellent. The biggest tip that I'll give you for making it nice and neat I will be actually refolding all of these lengths to actually take use of the most space possible. So I'll refold them so they all have a set, you know, maybe half of this, and then they'll all fit in that dimension. 
obviously there'll be different heights and then I always store them with a little just a nice little neat uh, roll side just a single roll at the, the front here so I can see what the fabric is really nice without any messy uh, raw edges or selvages poking out I don't like that so that's my tip on fabric let's talk about patterns uh, first of all let's specifically talk about patterns keeping them well how do you put them back in the envelopes when they're unfolded and unpacked and keep them neat and tidy? Because you'll know some will be like, you never almost never get them back into the envelope. And so what can you do? So I would start there first. Do you want to just store them as is in their packets? Do you have printed PDFs? How do you want to like present each of your patterns? So that could mean uh, maybe you store them all into Ziploc bags. So you can have still the main uh, picture on the front to know what it is. And you know, so that all your Ziploc bags are the same size and they're all going in like this. And then obviously all the folded up patterns that don't fit back in the envelope, fit back into your larger bag here. The same again, you might do something like uh, the same thing, but on uh, envelopes, some paper envelopes, the same thing, um, you know, just photocopy a uh, front page, front and back even usually, uh, so that you've got that accessed here. And then these all just sort and store like this. So it doesn't really matter which way you do, but do think about if you like that uniformity, so they all like match and look the same, or you get a bit of a mess like this. Obviously I have not sorted my patterns yet in case you're wondering. And of course, if you have A4 printouts, they will be a certain size. And again, you might like to put them all into little bags or envelopes so that they just all fit back in and fit nicely. But then how do we store these from here? So you would have already organized them in, you know, tops, blouses, skirts, pants, whatever makes sense for you. Basically you want to store them in the same way. So you kind of want to, put them all in together, but then have, think about labeling them, like categorizing them like a library folder, filing system. So if let's just for argument's sake, so you're going to have all your patterns stored in something like this. And then you want like get a piece of cardboard, something meant for a folder, whatever it is, something a little bit bigger. And then you can label the tops of them and have like them all slotted into little sections. So you can find, Oh, lingerie. Oh, trousers. And have the different sections and then all of your patterns will fit in between all of those. That's the way that I like to do it. Think of like a library system. Then of course you could just put them into uh, shelves like this on a bookcase. You could also put them into uh, baskets like this to hold them in and have your um, labeling systems like this. Of course, this could be inside a plastic tub. That works as well. Use the space that you have, but basically that's the best system I find. Um, and a mix of all of those bits and pieces will work for you in your uh, system. And then you'll be able to go and they'll all be labeled in their section. So you'll be able to find the kind of pattern that you're looking for when you need it. So good, right? And haberdashery and notions. This is where you've already sorted and organized them into little groups of things that make sense for you when you go looking for them. And so you want to store them in that same way. So it can be really simple or really fancy, but it's lots of little things are basically what we all want for our uh, notions and all the haberdashery. So some examples. So really, really simple. You would have already worked out if you have, maybe it's just a plastic tub, a basket, a drawer, and then you can organize them down from there. Could be as simple as organizing them all with different little Ziploc bags and they're just all in little different bags. You know, your needles, your zips, your threads, and they're just all in little bags. Could be that you have lots of like some shelves and some little baskets and you can pop them all in different little baskets or um, you know cloth wicker whatever it is and organize them that way you might have little um, freebie tubs like I did once upon a time and be able to put them all into little um, little little tubs like this in a cupboard in a wardrobe on a shelf and all labeled with all their different little things some great ideas you might be lucky enough to be able to get some different little drawers to put everything in for at least some of those things we really like little drawers I um, you could just simply you know sticky tape in your own little partitions i did with you know um cardboard <laughs> my cardboard in like sticky taped my own cardboard partitions in one of these and i had that for years and years to separate all of my different um, buttons and everything there so you could do the same thing in a big drawer little drawers like this could be have the little ziploc bags within your drawers like this 
think outside the box. Of course, if you're real lucky, you could get lots and lots of little drawers as well, like I've been able to upgrade to and to section them all off. So these might go on shelves or inside a cupboard like I've got. Maybe if you just get one of these for even your tiny little things, and then there's larger drawers for your larger items, and you can like separate these down with even like little um, containers or, you know, as I said, cardboard partitions and still little baggies within there as well to separate everything out so that they, I know where they are. So think big picture where all of the separate different items are and then they're all separated down in between those little items as much or as little as you like, depending how many things you have and what you like to how you, far you like to go with your organizing. Use the resources you have on hand. I just have a few suggestions and that is to avoid uh, rubber bands and pins or at least be careful with your choices. I used to store my uh, zips with rubber bands around them to hold each of them, like the sizes together. Rubber bands perish and they didn't really cause too much damage, but it's just something I'm not going to continue with. So I have to warn you about that sort of thing uh, with rubber bands. Uh, this, so they do perish over time and they may stain ribbons or they may damage your zips. So be careful about those and pins as well. Obviously, I am sure that some of you have bought some vintage lace or a vintage grandma's box of notions and you've had pins storing um, ribbons together and you pull it out and it's all rusted and yes. So be very careful of that as well. If you live somewhere like I do, that's quite, uh, things rust very, very, very easily. You want to use a stainless steel or brass pins if you're going to do that. Just be careful with your selection or that's where things like um, other methods might be better. So just use, just there are a few things to think about and the same rules apply out of direct sunlight because that will be the thing that damages it the most and obviously dust and just keeping them clean. And of course, once we have stored everything, you can now decorate the really, really fun part. But of course, I can't tell you how to decorate your sewing space. That is such a personal thing that only you can decide on how to decorate it. I do have a few ideas and tips for you though, because decoration is really fun and it is something that really brings life to your sewing space. And there's one thing I want you to promise me is that you should put one thing in there that makes you smile every time you look at it, just because. Promise. So one way to look at your uh, decoration, because I mean, you could put pretty pictures on the walls and pretty all these things everywhere, but we're generally very limited on space in our sewing spaces. So I like to really think about the storage that you've got as decoration as well. For example, my rolls of fabric over here on rolls fill part of that blank wall over there. And of course my vintage sewing machines. And I used to even have all my vintage uh, sewing uh, notions and supplies, ribbons, um, needles, all displayed along my uh, vintage books. So either all of them sort of, you know, all, all nicely decorated. This, it, the storage also found, formed part of my um, decoration and the theme and the style that I wanted to give. So that's probably the biggest tip um, with store, uh, decorations to think of it as storage. There are a few things though that do um, give you some ideas on uh, things you can use easily, such as pin trays. They're out always and you can have something colorful or um, decorative like mine that very easy to decorate your sewing space with something like your pin trays. Well, basically anything that's out that you're using all the time. Uh, all of the things, you know, your tape measures, your tailor's chalks, your markers, your pattern weights, things like this, you know, could be stored in a way that is very decorative, like a little basket or something in your favorite color or a print of something, because you'll probably have that out all the time. So it's a way you could decorate and store. Your scissors, for example, but maybe you have a pegboard is your, your thing. So your storage as um, an idea as well. Things like machine covers, sewing machine covers, you need to cover your machine, but you can have a really pretty one that also decorates your room as well. This stage is going to take time and it will just be something probably that you really slowly chip away at as well. I know I will be certainly for mine. And so I will also be doing a vlog about my own sewing studio uh, makeover to give you some ideas and show you behind the scenes of mine. But I've been following this three-step process that I hope uh, has really helped you to get a really good idea of how you can organize your sewing space to be your 
best, most creative sewing space that I know you're going to create wonderful things in. All those videos are linked down below in the description box. So do go check them out if you haven't already. But I really want to hear from you. Tell me, what is your best storage idea? We all have different spaces and ways to store things. So make sure you read all of those comments down below too, because there'll be some wonderful storage ideas I know from you all here in our community as well. So read the comments and I can't wait to read your comment on your best storage solution for us too. And of course, don't forget to use the hashtag so organized and tag me Evelyn double underscore wood on Instagram so I can see your wonderful makeovers and we can all check out yours as well. Until then, my sewing friends, happy sewing. Bye.